Hey the Wootsuit family, it's Ryan here. So about once a year, I seem to have this tradition where I come on the channel and I talk about how I'm not very handy, but I had to overcome some sort of challenge in my house. I talked about learning how to fix my roof, I've talked about learning how to fix my basement, and now I'm here to talk about how I fixed my toilet. Now it was about this time last year where we first discovered a problem with our toilet. During the basement renovations, we ended up discovering that the toilet had been running for about a week, and because we weren't spending any time down there, we didn't notice it right away. We seemed to get the issue to resolve itself by jiggling the handle, but we knew it was only going to be about a matter of time. And then a few weeks back, I noticed that I had used the toilet one night, and it was still running the next day, and so, we had to figure out a way to address this. Now we're about to head into another round of renovations in the basement. And so on one level, it's not overly concerning because the toilet's probably gonna end up getting moved from one area of the basement to the other. But at the same time, I didn't want this toilet to be running constantly. So my initial reaction was maybe first I would just shut off the water to the, the toilet so that it wouldn't be running anymore and we would just not use it. Easier said than done because it turns out it's a plastic handle and no matter how many times I tried to jiggle it back and forth, I could not close the valve. And when I tried to close the valve, it started to leak everywhere. So then I thought, well, maybe I could just shut off the water to the house, disconnect the toilet, cap it, and then turn the water back on and we just, again, wouldn't use the toilet. But I didn't really want to muck around with adjusting the piping on the off chance that I could not get the pipe to seal properly and then it would leak, which would mean that we wouldn't be able to have water to the rest of the house. And of course, all of these problems happen on a Sunday night after the store is all closed, so it's not even like I could run out to really get plumbing supplies at this time anyways. So, we made the decision that the next day I would call a plumber to have them come out and at the very least take a look at it and maybe replace the valve to allow us to shut off the toilet since it was jammed shut. So in the morning, I turned off the water to the house because we weren't going to be home anyways, let the water lines drain out, and then I went to work and started preparing to call for the plumber. One of the things that I wanted to do when I called the plumber was give them an accurate set of descriptions of what was going on and I know roughly how a toilet works but I didn't know what to call the various things so I started to do some research on the various components of the inside of a toilet. While doing the research for this I discovered that the thing that stopped working was called the fill valve and I knew the brand of my toilet I didn't know the exact model but I knew the brand and so I started to search fill valve colder toilets and I found on the official website a series of videos on how to repair or replace parts of the toilet, including the fill valve. It turns out the fill valve can be replaced basically with no tools. All you need to do is catch the water when you unscrew it, but largely everything can be done just by swapping it out by hand. And so that night, my wife and I went out to the hardware store, we found a universal part that would fit into it, and we went home and I swapped out the part myself. What would have probably cost us about $100 to have a plumber come out and do themselves, I was able to do with $20 and a little bit of, well, you know, getting under the toilet and trying to figure it out myself. In this process, I did learn a couple lessons and I wanted to share them with you now. First, it's good to know roughly how stuff works around the house. If it was something that was a little bit more complicated, or say electronic, or even electricity, because I am like terrified of killing myself with electricity, I'm probably not going to be as brave with doing some repairs, but it's still good to know how things work in the house, at least on a general level. Remember that the people who manufacture these parts oftentimes will have documentations or videos or do-it-yourself stuff in order to educate people on how to use their products. So it's always a good idea to go to their repair sites or go to the manufacturing sites, poke around a little bit in the troubleshooting section and see if you can find ways of addressing it yourself. Now in this case I would say that one thing I learned is that you have to have some level of courage, you have to have some level of faith and trust in yourself, but make sure you have a backup plan. In this case, my only backup plan was to shut off water to the house, which all things considered, I didn't want to have to do. So there was a little bit riding on this for me to not seriously mess it up. And the final thing I learned about this is just the, the weighing of the costs and the benefits. In this case, the cost of the part versus the cost of the repair. And really, if I was going to not save myself a lot of time and money by doing it myself, then maybe I would defer to letting someone else take care of it. But that's it. That concludes my yearly foray into trying to fix stuff around the house. You know, I am a knowledge worker, clearly as I dress the part, but oftentimes if with just a little bit of research and a little bit of faith in myself, I do 
pleasantly surprise myself that, you know what, I can actually be a little handy around the house. Thanks for stopping by and don't forget, stay awesome.